Hey, this is Graham English and welcome to Logic Studio Training. And today we're going to talk about the Arrange window. And this will be a very basic overview. This is for people who are new to Logic. If you've been using it a while, this might be a good refresher. You might not know the names of things. And it's always good to know the names of things so you can communicate with other producers, musicians, and Logic users effectively. So if you're not new to Logic, you're welcome to listen. And we'll just go ahead and begin and explain that once you open Logic with any of the the pre-installed templates you open this window which is called the arrange window so this is the main window of logic and it uses all the air, uh, editors and everything is available right here in the arrange window so you will use this window a lot so it's really important to get to know it and know exactly you know, where to go to find things and so the first thing we've got here is our toolbar and you'll see there's plenty of functions here not unlike another Mac app or other Mac apps or um, you know applications that you've been through so there's very useful buttons here and you can also customize this if you right click on this you can customize the toolbar and you can see all of these wonderful things that you can add and uh, customize your setup so that's good to know if you right click on the toolbar you can customize it much like other apps the finder and other things you can do that with as well and now what we're gonna look at right here is our inspector if it's not showing you click the inspector button and this shows the inspector so let's look now you see it now you don't see it now you do here it is and we've got uh, some drop down menus that we can expand and see different facets of the selected track so you can do lots of editing right here that is track based editing so that affects the entire track and we'll talk about the difference between say track based editing and, and uh, region based um, so region base are within a track so track is meta to region so we'll talk about that down the road but here's a lot of things you can do in the inspector here to affect your track and what we have down here is our arranged channel strips so this is the duplicate uh, of the channel strip that we would also see in the mixer if I were to go here and click mixer we see the mixer it's the duplicate right here so this is the left side is the actual track that is selected the right is its output okay so we're going to try output one and two and this is output one and two that's shown to the right of it so if I were to go out to let's choose a bus we'll choose bus one now all of a sudden this part of the inspector right here is showing bus one that's because of the output if I change this back to output one and two it, start, it shows output one and two again and you see when I added that bus it automatically automatically added this auxiliary channel right here which is set to input output bus one so that's how we can route things you can go ahead and it creates auxiliary channels channels uh, for every time you create one so if I go ahead and create a second bus now we've got two buses here and we can put insert effects send effects and do our mixing which we'll talk about later but so that's how you what's defined on the right side of this inspector the track inspector the channel strip portion of the track inspector so we'll go ahead and we'll bring this back to output one and two now while I've got my cursor down here we'll just look at this bottom area which is called our transport and our transport is where we play record uh, all your basic transport functions forward rewind and then we have a lot of information right here about the uh, project that we're working on and we have some buttons over here that we can again customize our transport transport bar just by right clicking on it and we have all of these extra transport buttons we can add we can add extra displays um, we can add modes or functions that we can click down here things you use all the time if you're a heavy mouse user you might like to have buttons everywhere so wherever your mouse is closest you can press them so the the transport is very powerful and it provides us with a lot of information that we'll look to uh, instantly when we need to know if MIDI is coming in or out if you want to find out if you're getting MIDI in you press your keyboard and I just pressed my keyboard and I can see MIDI is coming in and if I had an instrument in there or if I had a you know MIDI needing to go out of it it would show what's going out so that's something this is your time signature 
and the subdivision. So this is 4 4, and the subdivision is 16th notes. We can change that if we want just by holding it and dragging it. You can also type in there. Um, if we double click, we can change parts of the, the meter and our subdivision. There you go. And here we've got our tempo. And this is where the project ends. So at bar 130, we can change that if we wanted. If we wanted to look at the, the top right up here, if I change this to 8, see the project now ends at bar 8. And you see this little unique box, which signifies the end of the song. We'll go ahead and change that back to 130. Now this right here is our locate left and right indicators. So we can see we have a locator set at 1 and bar 5. And that's indicated right here by the gray in our in our uh, bar ruler. And if I click on that, it turns it into a loop. So we'll click off that. So that's your transport. You can do a lot with the transport and you'll be using that a lot. We just have a few more things. We have our track list. So when you add tracks, I'll go ahead and add another software instrument. They come down here and you select them. You can see the difference and you can see how it updates your mixer that I've got open right here. You've got your bar ruler. This goes by bars and the lower half you can see is the beats. So we go linear through our bar ruler and you can uh, use it for navigation, for playback and uh, recording tasks like punch in and out, things like that using cycle record. So you'll be up here a lot. If we open this, you'll see our global tracks. Global tracks in, uh, are like markers, your time signature, uh, your tempo. You can double click here to configure or, or uh, right click to configure global tracks and you can add other things like a video track, chord, transposition, and beat mapping all really powerful things and once you have all of those and you don't want to look at them you just unexpand it right here all right right above our uh, track list is our local menu bar and the local menu bar affects anything that you've got selected in the current window so we can do things like copy paste um, so we can uh, use different selects and deselects and really powerful stuff for manipulating the data on this window right here. You also have your undos. So anything that you undo right here will be anything that you previously did in this window. You have region functions, MIDI functions, audio, and you can change view modes and we'll talk about view modes down the road. Uh, if we move on over to here, if we click these buttons we can display all of our uh, lists, things like events, markers, tempo, signature, these we can do a lot with and we'll talk about them, as well as our media. This is uh, the the bin is files that are used in our project. Here's all of the loops that we installed and different ways of sorting loops. Your library of channel strips or audio unit presets depending what's selected in the arrange window. And then here's a browser. We can navigate throughout our computer up here and browse files this way and just easily drag them into our projects yeah, or into the arrange area. And this whole section right here is our arrange area. In the arrange area, we can zoom in different ways. So that's where you zoom in the arrange where area and everything else is probably similar to what you've seen in other apps. So. That's basically the arrange window. Of course, we'll talk about the things you can do in the arrange window, but just as an overview, you know you have these basic areas, and once you get to know them, uh, you'll you'll know how they interact with logic and how and and where you can find them in multiple places and things like that. So, go ahead, get started making music. Don't don't waste time thinking you need to know everything about logic before you get started. So go have fun, and we'll see you next time. If you're really serious about becoming a Logic Studio Power user, drop what you're doing and head to LogicStudioTraining.com. We've got hours of Logic Studio tutorials for beginners like you've seen here and some really advanced stuff to take your music to the next level. See you there.